Okay, then this numeracy two, paper two, prep sheet two, all the twos, calculator allowed. Let's crack on, yeah? Let's go. So this goes from pause the video. Have a go, come back when you're ready. Okay, start my time, let me make sure I'm not going over. Right, so this first one is all about knowing your conversions. The first one mentions liters and pints, and so does the second one. So remember, all right, um, there's two ways you can write this. Um, one liter is 1.75 pints. Some people say, another way of writing it down, okay, is four liters is, is about seven pints. On paper two, all right, I got no worries about decimals. So I will use this version here today, okay, because I've got a card like the decimals aren't gonna bother me. So remember, usual function machine sort of thing, going this way, you're multiplying. Going backwards, you'd be dividing. So question A then, six liters. So I'm going forwards this way, so multiply by 1.75. So if you just do 6 times 1.75, Get uh, 10.5, so six liters is about 10.5 pints, 10 and a half pints, and then part B 21 pints in the liters. I'm going backwards this time, I like so I divide by 1.75, and I think you get 12. I've got a calculator, why not? Yeah, you get 12 pints, 12 liters. Sorry, all right, so I'm looking backwards and pints to liters. Job done. And then question C and D, miles and meters, right? There's two connections again, one approximation, okay? so one mile, you know, is about 1,600 meters. A more precise one is that one mile is pretty much bang on 1,609 meters. They won't mind which one they use in the exam. I'm gonna use this one because, you know, it's just simpler numbers to work with, I suppose. So I'm going forwards, I am multiplying by 1600. If I were working backwards, I would divide by 1600. Okay, so part C then, nine miles. Obviously I'm going forwards, aren't I? From miles to meters. So I multiply by 1600. Well, 16 times 944. So it's gonna be 14,400 meters. And then part D, a little bit strange, isn't it? Okay, four and one third. This is quite awkward here, all right? So I would make this into a, you know, an actual fraction, and this is a mixed number. Best to make it into an actual fraction. You've seen the shortcut, and you're seven, eight, nine, probably. Maybe you just do four times three, which is 12, add one is 13, okay? So this actually is a, as a normal fraction, well, an improper fraction, is 13 thirds. Four times three is 12, add one is 13, and this denominator here will always be replicated there. Okay, so I just got to do 13 and one third now on the, sorry, 13 thirds on the calculator. Again, I'm still going forwards though. All right, so I'm still multiplying by 1600. You can see what you get. Gives me um, a more awkward answer. 6,933.33 uh, meters to 2 dp. And that's the first one done. Okay, so question two, pause the video, come back when you're ready. So this one, I've been asked to estimate the mean. Remember, this is a very robotic procedure, four steps. Um, yes, yeah, so let's make it happen. All right, remember the first step to do is always to add up the total frequency for all. But I call that sigma f, and just add up this column here, okay? All right, if you do that on the calculator, you get 80, and it should be 80 because it tells you here. Then find the midpoint of each group. So remember the midpoint of what is the midpoint of north and 90? Well, that's 45, the number in the middle. If you can't do it in your head, remember though, you can always take a shortcut, can't you? You can add the two numbers together, okay, which is 90, and then divide it by two, and you get 45. And that trick will always work to find the midpoint. So if you can't do them in your head, don't be embarrassed, okay? A lot of people can't. Just add it, both the numbers and divide by two. Make sure you push equals first though. So see for this second group, you would just do 90, add 180, which is 270. And then 270 over two is 135. 
Okay, so this midpoint year is 135. Then you can repeat the process. This one here is 225. This one here is 360. And this one here is 630. Okay. And we now multiply these two columns together. All right, so this one here is uh, 450. Uh, 450. Thirty-eight and one hundred and thirty-five is five thousand one hundred and thirty. Twenty times two hundred and twenty-five is four and a half thousand. Eight times three hundred and sixty is two thousand eight hundred and eighty. And four times six hundred and thirty, I think, is two thousand five hundred and twenty. Uh, yeah, it is. Remember now, add these numbers together now. So add these together. Okay. No, no, stupid in there. Add together. Sorry. Add those together. Oh, so 450 plus 5130 plus 4500 plus 2880 plus 2520 gives me 15,480. Remember then to find the mean. Remember, it's an, it's an estimation, hence the estimation sign. Remember, it's this number here. So it's 15,480 divided by the total frequency. Okay, so 15,480 divided by 80. And this should give us quite a nice answer because 80 is quite a nice number to divide by. It does, yeah. 193.5. Okay, part B then, which group contains the median value? You know, we've seen this before we are on, on other papers. Remember the median is the middle number. There's 80 people in my data set here. So the median is the middle and halfway through 80. So a half of 80 people, I am looking for the 40th person. All right, now remember then that the 40th person is gonna be in the second group. Now, why is this? Well, because after the first group, you've seen 10 people. Once you get into the second group, you'll see 38 more people. 10 people add 38 more means that by the end of this group, you've seen 48 people. See, up to here, you've seen 10 people. After here, you've seen 48 people. So the 40th person must live in this group here. Okay? So this per the, the median value um, is in that's not that's the, that's the worst s ever looks like, looks like an equality symbol d and me that's bad then that's bad even for me let's try that again it is in the second group down which is 90 less than t less than 180 job done okay this one in right pause this one have a go come back when you're ready okay so the first thing i see here is the exchange rate Always write this as a function machine. One euro is 154.18 krona. I'll just call that KR for short, okay? I'm not sure what the symbol for Icelandic krona. So my function machine method would say going this way, you're multiplying by 154.18. Going backwards, you're dividing by 154.18. And he wants to exchange 300 euros, no worries. So 300 euros. Would multiply when you go in this way by one by four point one eight, and we should get a nice whole number here because of the three hundred. We do, yeah. I get forty six thousand two hundred and fifty four coronas. Okay, but the bank only has twenty krona notes. So what that means is that they can only give kronas back. In 20s, so 20, 40, 60, 80, for example, okay, they can only basically, basically they can only count in 20s. Okay, so they're gonna say, right, here we go, sir. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, you know, blah blah blah, until you get to this number here. Now, but you won't get to this number here, will you? Hopefully you can see why. Because if you count in 20s, you can see kind of that the numbers all end in naught for a start. All right. And it's only ever going to go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. You see, the, the, the end digits will be 20, 40, 60, 80, etc. So I can't give out this much money. 
for how close can I get? Well, I think 46,000, I think 240, okay? You couldn't say 46,260 because that's over and you're never gonna get free money, trust me, okay? That's what he'll get back. That's as close as he can get if you count in 20s. Okay, so he will receive this much money here. How much will this cost him in euros? So this is kronas here. Well, it, how much in euros to turn kronas back into euros? You divide by the exchange rate. So 46,240 divided by the exchange rate. Okay. So divide by, sorry, 46240 divided by 154.18 gives me 299.91 this money. So you've got to go two decimal places. Euros. Okay. Job done. All right. Question four then. Pause the video. Have a go. Come back when you're ready. All right. Okay. So this one is about finding a prism's volume. Remember, a prism's volume, the formula is in the front of the exam paper. So there's no excuse here. It's the area of the cross section times the length. Now remember, okay, that the cross section of the shape is here. The flat bit you can see. All right. And this is patently a triangle here, okay? All right. So let's let's have a go at doing the area of the cross section first. Well, I know a triangle's area is the base times the height, the vertical height, divided by two. Okay. Now I know what the height is, isn't it? All right. The height is four centimeters, the vertical height. That's a right angle as well there, sorry. All right. But I do not know what the base is, sadly. All right. So I'm stuck at the moment. All right. But there must be a way to work the base out. And there is because if ever I see a right angle triangle, I'm always thinking trigonometry, Pythagoras. All right, so let's look at one of these right angle triangles. Let me let me, let me look at the right hand right angle triangle. All right, I'll give it a quick sketch. This height here is four centimeters. The slant height is five centimeters, and my goal is to find this part here. I call it X. Okay, remember. It'll be Pythagoras here because you've got two sides and you want to find the third. So that's C. All right. I call this one A. It doesn't really matter, does it? And I call this one B. Remember then, A squared. Ooh, let, me put, let me put in the column method. Remember that the famous formula is A squared add B squared equals C squared. A squared is 4 squared, which is 16. I don't know what b squared is yet. c squared is 5 squared, which is 25. And remember the trick in it to find this missing bit here. Then I will just do 16. So I'll just do 25, take away 16. Remember the saying, short side subtract. That's why I say it. Okay, so here I'll just do 25, take away 16 to find the missing number. And you get that equals 9. So b squared equals 9. That means B is the root of nine, which is three centimeters. Put it on the picture. Remember, there's only that bit here. That's three, and that's three. So the base will be six altogether, okay? Because it's three, add three. This is six. Six times four divided by two is 12 centimeters squares. So the volume is gonna be 12 cm squares. So this is the cross section here, okay? I multiply by the length, which is yaw. Okay, well, that's, that, was, that was a value, wasn't it? That's a dodgy highlighter. I'm gonna go away. Let me, let me use, let me use, let me just use a uh, hard use blue again, is it? Here we go, times the length. Okay, which is 10. So that's 12 centimeters squares times 10 centimeters. And if you work that out, we get 120 centimeters cubed. Remember, volume is always in cubic units. Okay, and that's that one done there. Right, last one then. Pause the video, I go, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so this one, you want to find the angle of elevation of the road, which is this here, the angle you look up at. 
I'll call that theta. It's going to be trigonometry because you want to find an angle. So remember, H O A. If you're unsure, remember, always refer to Sokotoa. So I know O and I know A. So it's 10. So tan theta is O over 8. See, remember that's O and that's A there, okay? That's O and that's A. We're going to find an angle. Take the inverse tan, okay? The inverse tangent by doing shift then tan of the fraction. From memory, it's about 7 point something, but uh, I have to check my... So the inverse tan of 200 over 1600. Yeah, 7.13 degrees to two decimal places. Job done easy, 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 easy.